The past year and a half has exposed us to a life that is so foreign and unusual. Due to the circumstances at hand of the current pandemic, we have, however, been forced to acclimatize to this new way of life. A lot more people now work from home. Some organizations have staff on shifts to decongest their establishments. Most of life's activities have, however, not seen much acclimatization. Take for example how corporates used to go to gym to de-stress and release work tension. Currently though, even though gyms remain open, they are still not as occupied as they used to be as many fear picking up a COVID-19 infection from there. While this can somewhat be a great thing, as it can help with slowing the rate at which the virus spreads, it can lead to pandemic fatigue where restlessness even among the public can be observed. How then can this issue be addressed? Dr. Kieran Bhagat is on the program. The, the issue of pandemic fatigue is something that is, is, is we are increasingly seeing, particularly, dare I say, uh, amongst the youth uh, and, and children. Children are absolutely fed up of staying at home. Uh, they literally cry because they, they, they can't go and play with their friends. You know, primary and secondary school children um, want to, 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 to socialize and to benefit from their friends. Um, and young adults want to go out and meet their friends. So there is a sense of, uh, I'm tired of all of this. You know, when is it all going to end? And uh, what I say to, to, to our younger population is, sometimes you need to think about your parents and your grandparents and you need to do it for them and for their sake because we are seeing this epidemic or pandemic affecting some of the middle-aged and elderly. With the, the new variants, they are attacking some of the younger population. Um, and it's important to remember, particularly amongst the young uh, population, is that with the new variants, what we're seeing in those that have this fatigue and have dropped their guard in terms of mitigating factors, distancing, masking and washing their hands, um, is that they have contracted COVID. And with the younger population, the COVID has not had uh, a major impact during the time they have the COVID, but we're seeing amongst the younger population what is called the long COVID syndrome. The younger population, we're seeing a rising number of people having symptoms after having had a mild flu-like illness. They come to the doctor with fatigue, with chest pain, with headache, with what I call brain fog. They forget what, what's going on, muscle cramps, palpitations in the younger population. We call that the long COVID and it's being well described in countries uh, in North America and in the UK, where they've actually started clinics called long COVID clinics. And the majority of these are actually youngsters that are attending, having had a mild flu COVID uh, infection and now developing the consequences. So it's really important to remember that as much as we're all tired uh, with this and fatigued by the word pandemic and epidemic and lockdown, it's important not to let your guard down until we have a good number of people that are vaccinated, that we are in a new normal in terms of how we behave, whether it's in the workplace or in the restaurant or at home uh, in terms of trying to raise uh, your spirits. Think about the future, think about your parents, think about your grandparents and think about the country in terms of the idea of I'm just fed up. That is all we have for you tonight on First Issues. But before we part, we wish you a happy and safe independence holiday. Remember to properly wear your mask, wash your hands and sanitize. Until next time, good night. <laughs> This program was brought to you in association with First National Bank of Botswana. FNB, how can we help you?